There are several types of clock reactions and the mechanisms on clock reactions if you're going to talk about them in a kinetics class or kinetics unit are sometimes very difficult to understand, especially when represented in equation form. A nice visual analogy that you can do is really simple to set up. is just involving paper plates and some cardboard or poster board pieces and getting some students out of your classroom to help with the demonstration. So I have six students with us today. And you can see we have two different kinds of molecules. We have our circle molecules over here, and we have our square molecules over here. Both of these molecules, when they come together, cause a color change. So in this case, all of our molecules are colorless. But when we bring circle and square together, when the two meet, they change color and become a dark black color. But inside of our reaction, there's another side reaction that happens, a bagger molecule that can take these away and keep them from being seen as black colors. Thank you very much. So when the next one comes together, again, circle and square will meet. We get a black color compound, but the bagger molecule comes in and steals both of those molecules, ties them up, and keeps them from becoming visible. But if we run out of bagger molecules and circle and square still meet, we see that color and it lasts. So when you look at a clock reaction, it's very often the case that there's a limiting reactant kind of thing where when one of the molecules gets completely used up, then the color becomes visible. Thank you both very much. If we want to apply this to the iodine starch reaction, I have the equation up here. And the way that the iodine starch reaction starts, you have iodate, potassium iodate is what we use to put that into solution and a hydrogen sulfide ion as well. The two of these react together to produce the iodide ion. Well, the iodide ion then, in the presence of iodate, because they're both in the same flask, when the iodide meets the iodate, it forms elemental iodine or diatomic iodine. And one of the tips I give my students about the diatomic elements is I tell them they all make a seven on the periodic table. If you start at number seven, nitrogen, you go across to oxygen, then to the halogens and down, they make a seven in the upper corner of the periodic table. But that I diatomic iodine can react with starch. And most of my students in their biology classes have done testing for starches. And those two things they've seen when they put the iodine solution on the potato, it turns black or blue. So they're actually usually familiar with that. So what happens here is that we have this, when combined with starch, that makes a blue-black compound. So that blue-black complex that's formed is what we see when we see that blue color at the end of the iodine clock reaction. But the interesting thing about this reaction is that as long as there's still that hydrogen sulfite ion, that iodine gets turned back into the iodide ion. So it's reduced back to the iodide ion as long as you still have hydrogen sulfite ions left. However, if you use up all of this hydrogen sulfite, this reaction can't happen anymore. And all you get is that blue-black compound formed of the iodine in the presence of starch. So you can use both the analogy of the paper plates and the squares and the bags to illustrate to your students sort of what's happening inside of here. And our bagger molecule, in this case, becomes the hydrogen sulfite ion. So it's a way to help break down reaction mechanisms for your students in a way that's a little bit easier to see and a little bit easier to remember when they're coming to assessment time. Thank you.